It's like trying to find a specific grain of sand on every beach on Earth. Oh, wow. That's what it's like for researchers in artificial life. Yeah. Until now. Until now. With this new paper we're looking at today, automating the search for artificial life with foundation models. Right. It lays out this technique called a cell. Yeah. And it's causing a stir. And it's interesting because it's not just like, yeah. here's a new technique. It's really like a deep dive into like the conceptual right. and methodological underpinnings. Yeah. So what is ACEL and how does it approach this problem of finding these really interesting artificial life simulations? So it leverages the power of these huge AI models. Okay. We call them foundation models uh -huh. and specifically visual models. Interesting. Like CLAP and Dino V2. Okay. That have been trained on millions and millions of images. So they're like visual experts. Exactly. They can see patterns and relationships that we as humans would never be able to. Exactly. Yeah. They've developed this understanding of what we consider visually complex. Like or interesting, and that's the key. Interesting. ASOL uses these models as a proxy for human judgment. Okay. To guide the search for simulations that exhibit those same qualities. So this idea of supervised search. Yeah. How yeah. does that work in practice? So imagine you're a researcher and you want to find a simulation that produces a very specific outcome. Okay. Like, let's say a creature developing camouflage. Okay. You can literally just write a prompt. Uh-huh. A set of instructions. In English. In plain English. Wow. Describing that outcome. So you give the AI a mission. Exactly. It goes and explores these configurations until it finds one. Exactly. And it does this so fast. Yeah. It would be impossible for humans to do. Like an army of scientists. Yeah. Running these simulations. All in parallel. At the same time. Testing different parameters. And know. observing the results. That's amazing. Yeah. And the paper talks about more than just finding simulations that match these goals, but finding simulations that exhibit open-endedness. Which honestly... It's a the, very complex concept. It is. But they offer a really concrete definition. Okay. Which is that in a truly open-ended system, you're not going to see the same patterns over and over again. Yeah. You'll see genuine novelty emerging mm -hmm. structures and behaviors that were never programmed in. Wow. That the researchers themselves never imagined. A ASL can detect this. That's where the sophistication of these models comes in. Okay. They've been trained on such a massive data set. Mm -hmm. They have this nuanced understanding of what is novel. Okay. They can detect when a simulation is producing something truly unique. It's not just matching these predefined criteria. Right. It's like the AI is developing a sense of what's surprising exactly. within the simulation itself. It's like the AI is becoming an explorer. Wow. Charting the unknown territories of these digital universes. That's so cool. Yeah. Now, you mentioned a third search method. Yes. Illumination search. Illumination search. What is that? Think of it as making a map okay. of a vast unexplored continent. Yeah. The goal of illumination search is to map the space of possibilities within a specific simulation. Uh -huh. We call this the substrate. The substrate. Yeah, and so it's less about finding a particular outcome and more about understanding what's possible. So instead of finding a needle in a haystack, right. you're understanding the haystack. Exactly. It's, the, yeah. it's about revealing these hidden connections and relationships between all these different parameters and right. how they give rise to these different outcomes. That makes sense. It's a way to uncover these underlying principles that govern how these complex systems work. I mean, how do we know that the AI's sense of interesting yeah. aligns with ours? That's a crucial question. Yeah. And they actually address that in the paper. Okay. One of the key insights is that ASL isn't just searching for anything that's statistically unusual. Okay. It's leveraging foundation models that have been trained on data that reflects human preferences and perceptions. So it's finding the things that are statistically unusual to the AI, mm. but also meaningful to us. Yeah, and relevant to us yeah. as humans. Yeah. Can you give me some specific examples of what AALLs has discovered? Oh, yeah. What life forms has it found? Hold on to your hats because this is where it gets exciting. Yeah. So they put ASL to the test yeah. on a bunch of different artificial life platforms. Okay. 
And the results are mind-blowing. So one of the platforms they explore is called Lenia. Lenia. Which is like a much more sophisticated version of Conway's Game of Life. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I love those like hypnotic patterns. Right. That come out of like yeah. simple rules. So Lenia takes that to a whole other level. Uh. It's a continuous generalization of cellular automata. Okay. Meaning that instead of just these on or off states, yeah. it allows for this smooth spectrum of values. Interesting. And what's amazing is ASL was able to find all these new life forms in the Lenia substrate. So we're not talking about bacteria or cells. Right. We're talking about... It's digital entities yeah. that exhibit these lifelike properties. Exactly. They found these self-organizing cells right. that exhibit different shapes, colors, and behaviors. It's like witnessing a whole new ecosystem, right. but in a computer. And what's even more remarkable is that ASL was able to discover these life forms yeah. without being explicitly told what to look for. Wow. It was simply given the goal of finding simulations that had high levels of complexity and novelty, right. and it was able to deliver. That's incredible. But how do you measure right. complexity and novelty? That's a great question. These are not like physical attributes. It gets to the heart of what makes ASL so groundbreaking. Okay. One of the key innovations is its ability to quantify okay. phenomena that have traditionally been studied only qualitatively. Interesting. So like ASL can analyze okay. how changing a single parameter in a simulation affects its overall complexity or measure how long it takes a simulation to reach a stable state. So you're going beyond just subjective judgments. Exactly. Of whether or not a simulation is interesting. Yeah, it's more objective. It's more data-driven. It's a data-driven way to analyze these systems. So these are really abstract concepts. Yes. How do we know that ASL is measuring them correctly. That's where those foundation models come back in. Okay. They've been trained on such massive amounts of data right. that they've developed an understanding uh -huh. of what we humans find visually complex or interesting. Okay. So ASL can track how the AI model's understanding of the simulation changes over time. So if the AI is constantly being surprised, right. that means it's witnessing something truly novel exactly and complex it's like the ai is saying wow i've never seen anything like this before yeah and that's a strong indicator that the simulation is exhibiting open-endedness that's amazing right you mentioned flocking behavior yeah uh -huh. like boids so they used asl to search for new and unexpected flocking patterns All right. in boids simulations and they were able to find patterns that had never been observed before wow patterns that emerged from the complex interactions between the individual boids so it's uncovering these hidden corners of the Boyd's universe. That's a great way to put it. Revealing these emergent behaviors yeah. that were always there, uh -huh. but we just couldn't see them. Exactly. And they also applied ASL to something called particle life. Particle life. Which is kind of like a digital ant farm. Oh. But instead of ants, you have these tiny particles that yeah. interact with each other based on these simple rules. But so not real ants. No. But digital particles mm -hmm. behaving according to these simple rules. Exactly. But complex structures can emerge. Right. What's cool is that ASL was able to find simulations where these particles self-organized into these complex and intricate structures, oh. things that hadn't been seen before. So ASL is really pushing the boundaries. It really is. Of what's possible in artificial life research. Yeah. What about the future? Yeah. Where do we go from here? So it seems like we're just scratching the surface of AL. Yeah. Where do you see this technology going in the next few years? One really exciting avenue is using ASL with models that can understand video. Oh, instead of still images? Not just still images. So mm -hmm. the AI could analyze the entire process of evolution? Exactly. Not just the end results? It would be like having a time lapse of evolution right but instead of just watching it right we can actually quantify and analyze the changes that would be amazing it would what about using 3d foundation models oh yeah could asl create entire artificial worlds it's definitely possible not just flat simulations yeah we already have ai models that can generate realistic 3d environments right yeah. combining those with asl could lead to some crazy simulations it'd be like exploring these virtual worlds yeah 
with these artificial life forms that have evolved with their own rules. Mm, exactly. It's like science fiction. It really is. Yeah. And what if we use language models to describe those worlds? Oh, wow. To give them narratives. So the AI is generating stories yeah. about the evolution of artificial life. In these simulated universes. It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. I mean, we already have AI that can write stories. We do. So. Yeah, combining that with ASL could lead to some really cool storytelling. That's incredible. Yeah. But what are the bigger implications of ASL? I think one of the most profound implications is that it challenges our view of life. Okay. You know, it shows us that lifelike properties can emerge in systems that are completely different from anything on Earth. So instead of just looking for life that looks like what we know, right. we should be looking for life as we don't know it. Exactly. ASL is expanding our definition of life. It's huge. It has implications for our search for extraterrestrial life. If we can use AI to discover new forms of life in a computer, yeah, could we use it to understand the real world? That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. Could this be the key to unlocking new biological secrets? Right. Or even finding life beyond Earth? Instead of looking for specific biosignatures, yeah. We could train AI to recognize patterns of complexity. Exactly. That might indicate life. Even if it's totally different from what we know. So ASL isn't just a tool. Right. It's a window into the fundamental nature of life itself. And that's what makes this field so interesting. Yeah. It's not just about the technology. It's, it's about asking some of the biggest questions humanity has ever asked. And as AI keeps evolving... Who knows what we'll discover? I can't wait to find out. Me too. And I bet we'll be hearing a lot more about ASAL. I think so. And artificial life in the coming years. Yeah, it's a field that's ready for breakthroughs. Definitely. Yeah, it has the potential to change our understanding of the universe. Yeah, and our place in it. Exactly. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the world of ASAL and artificial life. It's been fun. Yeah, we covered a lot today from the technical details to the really big philosophical questions. We did. What does it mean to create life in a computer? It was a pleasure exploring these ideas with you. Likewise. Yeah. I hope our listeners have gained a new appreciation for AI. Definitely. And the possibilities of artificial life. So if ASAL can help us discover new forms of life in these simulations, right. what does that say about our own imaginations Yeah. and the vast possibilities out there in the universe? Something to think about. Definitely something to ponder. It's a reminder that we're living in a time of incredible discovery. Yeah. The boundaries of what we thought was possible are constantly being pushed. Absolutely. And on that note, yeah. we'll leave you to ponder the mysteries of life. Okay. <laughs> both real and artificial. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Until next time.